Am I the a-hole stories? Update, am I the a-hole? I am dying and want to have a catch up with my first love. Original story. For starters, I, 32 female, am dying due to cancer. It was diagnosed pretty late after two weeks of severe stomach pain and throwing up after every meal. At the stage I am in, doctors have suggested palliative care rather than any treatments, which I am sad about. But that's life A. Eh? I am from one of the countries where marriage is arranged rather than the western way. I was in love with someone, A, eh, when I was 18 to 19 years old. Though he was from the same community as I am, my parents did not agree to it due to his economic background, which was few steps below us. My parents fixed my marriage with my husband, B, and we are married for 12 years now. We don't have kids. B doesn't know about A's my ex BF, but knows A, as he is quite well known in our small city. He never asked me about my previous love affairs, since that's very taboo in my culture, and I lied by mission. A remains single and is now a professor in our local university. He has gained quite a name by mentoring young people and directing them in the right study slash career path. Now I have done everything I need to do, my legal and financial stuff is sorted, and I have spoken to my husband on what I need him to do, get married again. Don't think that is a betrayal to my memory, don't ask if my parents are okay about it etc. Now with people walking on eggshells around me, I have been thinking a lot about A and I really want to spend some time with him, a couple of hours, and have a meal and walk down the memory lane, if he is willing of course. I mean. I don't know, I feel like do what you like, on the other hand, I feel it's selfish. My husband worships the ground I walk on and I love him. But A is like that childhood crush on your favorite actor or sportsman, or first love in high school which would be stored in a tiny corner of your heart and brings a wistful smile. I am just conflicted if I would be the a-hole if I tell my husband about A and this wish of mine. Note, my intention is just to have a chat and a meal, just him. I have had two palliative surgeries and have two bags in my lower tummy. So, nothing physical or like an affair and it would be in my home. Now for the top comments before we read the update. No a-holes here. I don't know if it's a good idea to tell your husband exactly what your relationship with A was however. I would just tell him you want to spend time with your friends before you leave, A being one of them. You were friends years ago, even if that included a crush. No a-holes here, as long as the intention is catching up with an old friend, not a quick affair before you pass. Oh no! Let me edit my post. Thank you for your judgment. I can't go outside. I have some bags attached to my body. No a-holes here. I can't in good faith call you an a-hole for wanting this, but I do think it would be a mistake to contact him. While it could go well and be a pleasant afternoon, it's far more likely that it will either be incredibly awkward, or incredibly painful for both of you. People love the idea of this sort of thing, and in movies and TV shows it usually goes well. Reality, unfortunately, is often far different. I also think it will create a lot of tension and issues amongst the living, which is a selfish thing to do, dying or not. I'm sorry you have to deal with this OP, may your spirit find rest in whatever lies beyond. Thank you. I am very scared thinking about what will happen, you know, afterwards? But I understand where you are coming from. Appreciate your views. What will happen afterwards is up to you and your beliefs. It's your decision. Our culture does believe in soul never dies philosophy and approach death philosophically, but I still don't know and am scared of the unknown. Though doctors say I would be knocked off with painkillers probably. And now for the update. Hi, this is S's husband and she passed away after 5 weeks of posting this. I just looked into this account slash phone before 2 days. She never told me about A herself. But we live in a small town, and everyone knows about everyone's business including rumors. So. I kind of knew about this vaguely. A did come to see her as a courtesy once her illness became known to people in our place. She was a very nice human being, a dutiful wife and daughter, and I really miss her. She was also my best friend and confidant. She was a genuinely nice and kind person and she deteriorated quite quickly post her diagnosis. I just saw this account in her phone and am planning to have a chat with A to see if he would be willing to organize a scholarship paid by me with her inheritance, in her memory to sponsor the higher education of few kids every year and making them self-sufficient. This is something she wanted to do. I am still not sure if I should tell A that I know their history. But that's a different discussion for a different day. I wish she had been one of those miraculous recoveries where doctors aren't even sure how something happened. She was a very warm and loving person and thanks to everyone who had messaged her asking for updates, 
checking on her. Thanks again. Now for the top comments. Thank you for updating us. I am very sorry about your loss. We only got her for a couple paragraphs and could sense her warmth and kindness through her words. I am glad you got to live in that sunlight with her. What a gorgeous sentiment. I couldn't agree more. In such a short post, I feel like we saw a great deal of her spirit and the kind of person she was. You're reacting wonderfully to the news of her past relationship, I think it would have made her very happy to know you were so supportive of something she seemed nervous about. I'm sorry for your loss. I agree. It seems obvious that you are just as kind as she made you sound in her first post. I'm sorry for your loss, and I think it's amazing of you to see her good intentions, and to honor her with a scholarship. I wish you all the best for the future. I mean, she definitely was in no wrong as it was simply to catch up and see where people in her life are before she passed, as every person would want to see every person they've been close to, that were amicable one last time, as even if it's not romantic, that person still played a part in her life and having a closure is the least, anyone should get to know that people you were once close to are doing well. This is a beautiful update. Thank you so much for posting. I am incredibly sorry for your loss. It sounds like you and your wife had a great deal of love and respect for one another. I think creating a scholarship in her honor is a beautiful way to pay tribute to her. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my wife I wish she would take care of herself like her friends do? Six years ago, I met my now wife and we hit it off. We had all the same interest, same views, same goals in life. The only issue we had was how we felt about each other's appearance. I don't need a woman who hides herself with makeup, in fact I oppose that, but I do like my woman to have her hair managed and does dress up a little when we go on dates. Now my then girlfriend wasn't like that, she had a masculine sense of fashion and let her frizzy hair wayward. After our talk we set some ground rules, we weren't going to change our appearances for one another, but there were factors we take into consideration, she liked a well trimmed beard and certain length haircut, so I made sure to maintain those things. I asked she put some effort into how she dressed on our date. I never said it had to be a dress, but just a nice blouse. 8 months in of dating, we almost broke up, because while I fulfilled my end of the bargain, she never did. I explained I didn't want her to be uncomfortable, and what I want shouldn't come before that, so it was best we split. She decided she loved me and put in more of an effort. We get married, move in together and life gets rolling. But as it does, she went back into her old ways of never dressing up or managing her hair. I still keep my beard trim the way she likes it, along with my hair cut. When I mentioned it to her she shrugs and says, we are married now, it doesn't matter. To me it does. She has two close friends, both wives and moms too. Whenever I see them, they're both dressed nicely and cleaned up. They invite my wife to get her hair trimmed with them or attend a yoga class, but she always say no, she's pretty enough she doesn't need those things. It frustrates me. Yesterday she was mocking her friend for getting highlights in her hair, saying it was ridiculous and unnatural, and I snapped back, I wish she would take care of herself like her friends do. She left for her parents, both who are blowing up my phone now and trying to get me to bring our son over. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. You're the a-hole. I really don't know what else to say. You allegedly love this woman. But you're willing to throw it all away because she isn't groomed to your standards? What if she got sick and couldn't look the way you wanted anymore, would you be gone too? For her to say, we're married so it doesn't matter now. Is pretty messed up. She allegedly loves him, but is willing to throw it all away because he wants her to wash her hair and wear a nice top? This knife cuts both ways. I was going to go with everyone sucks here, but honestly? You're the a-hole. I don't think you know how hard it is to have frizzy slash wavy hair and a lot of it. Her hair can be clean from a wash and still be frizzy. Because it's the type of hair she has. I've tried all sorts of hair products, shampoos, and conditioners and yet it's still frizzy. The only thing that stops it for a couple hours is straightening, but that gives me split ends. She could make more of an effort by dressing up, but if you don't like big hair then don't marry slash date someone with it. Yeah, I did let out a bit of a snort at the part where OP said she lets her hair be frizzy. Dude. I don't have the patience or arm strength for at least an hour of blow drying, plus the money to replace multiple containers of smoothing product every time I shower, to beat mine into submission. And keeping it short does not help. Then it's just frizzy and I can't tie it back if it insists on sticking out in all directions. You're the a-hole. Your wife is an a-hole to herself for staying with someone as condescending and controlling as you for this long. 
She clearly has some major issues with self-esteem if she's put up with this nonsense this long. Full body cringe at my woman, by the way. Seriously. The my woman bit nearly made me dry heave. Yes, that my woman crap tells us a lot about this dude. He doesn't love her as she is. They should never have gotten married. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not letting my husband work less? Last week I, 29 female, received a big promotion, an extra 18k a year. My husband, 28 male, was very happy for me, but yesterday, he has floated the idea by me that he would like to step down from his current position and become part-time. He wants to dedicate more time to his writing, he wants to become an author, and thinks we don't need his salary that much. I told him no. I am taking this promotion to make more money as a family, so that we can live a better life, own a home, pay off student loans, enjoy ourselves, etc. I feel like taking a promotion just to have my husband step down to a lower paying position, while also working fewer hours, is a lateral move for us as a family while a massive increase in stress for myself. He wasn't too happy about it and accused me of not believing in him, and sabotaging his dream to become a writer. Am I the a-hole for not letting him work less? Top comments. Not the a-hole. By attaching your finances in marriage, you have a vested interest in his career. If he was that passionate about writing, he would find time to get it done as so many others have. I work a full-time job, have a small side business, and I still managed to write a novel this spring. I'm in the middle of a second one now, and expect I'll wrap it up next spring. If you want to be a writer, write. Plus, the time to step down from your day job is when you have royalties already coming in, not when you're hoping to do it someday. Not the a-hole OP, and congrats Chicklet on finishing a novel. Not the a-hole. Tons of authors have full-time jobs. Toni Morrison had a full-time job and was a single mom. I say, he gets the ball rolling on that writing career first. If he's getting some good feedback from the industry, agents, literary journals, etc., then that's another discussion. Not the a-hole. Writer here, seconding this. He can go down in hours once he makes enough money from writing to offset the income loss. I didn't quit my job until three years after I started publishing books, and five years after I started writing seriously. I only did, because that year got a book deal that was the equivalent of four years at my old day job, so it made sense. Writing income is wild. Some years you might make amazing money, other years you might make next to nothing. You rarely have any idea what it'll be. I find that too stressful, even as someone without kids. After about two years, I went back to work part-time, but it's more skilled and related to writing. I make the same now at 2.5 days that I made full-time back then. It's just nice to not have to worry as much that way, and I like my job. Also, publishing is slow. For most, it takes time to build up advances, royalties, speaking fee opportunities are a lot lower thanks to COVID, and so on. Not the a-hole, but maybe you two can sit down and figure out a budget that allows him a timeline? For example, X amount of debt paid off and Y amount of savings, is a place where he can step his hours down, then he has a concrete goal to work towards. Or additionally, encourage him to try to find another job that might pay more and allow him to work fewer hours? Probably a long shot, given the unemployment rate, but he could at least see if it is an option for him. Maybe you two can sit down and figure out a budget that allows him a timeline? I'll look into it, but my problem is that I did take this promotion, and the stress plus longer hours involved with it, to able to afford a better life. I want us to have our own home, and wish to maybe start a family. It would be different if he showed me that he can make money as an author. But until he does, I don't feel like working longer, more stressful hours, for essentially no benefit. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. Turn the notification on to get updated on my latest posts. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.